Greetings, 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 Royal Family. Welcome back to the channel. Happy Tuesday. It's March 4th. Four days in. I'm saying March 4th. What's wrong with me? May 4th. Happy May 4th, everybody. May the 4th be with you. It is Tuesday, second day of the week. Hopefully your week is going fantastic so far. Mine is. So I'm back with another morning boogie morning show, I guess. Are we going to still call it that? I don't know. Still getting back into the groove of things. All right. So today's lineup is going to be quick. Hopefully, I say that all the time, right? Um, and hopefully fun. So Wendy Williams is getting waxed. I'll explain in detail. For all of my superhero Wakanda Forever fans, Marvel fans, um, Black Panther 2 is coming to a theater near you. Not until next year, though, along with a couple of other Marvel films. Bill Gates, the Bill Gates, after 20-something-odd years of marriage, is getting a divorce. And TMZ says that there is no prenup. Ooh-wee! So this should be interesting. Got a couple of other hot topics sprinkled in between. So for my YouTube family, make sure you pay your admission fee. Hit the thumbs up button. Okay, it's free. Doesn't cost you anything. All right. And to my Twitch fam, if you're watching live, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. First up is my home girl. Wendy Williams. So Wendy Williams is getting waxed. What the heck are you talking about, Royal B? Wendy Williams is getting a wax figure at the Wax Museum, Madame Tussauds in New York. Now, let me tell you something. You got to be a big dog to get a wax figure, okay? So these wax experts, they flew in from London. And you know, Wendy is a working woman. So during the taping of her shows backstage, you know, the people came in, took measurements. She said she wanted the lymphedema and all. She wanted it to look very, 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 very realistic. So they were taking measurements. She said that she liked the outcome. So obviously she has seen it. She is going to be revealing the final product on her show next week, she says. So she talked about this on her show yesterday during her Hot Topic segment. Her mother was able to see uh, the wax figure, the completed wax figure prior to her passing and she said that she showed her mom like oh you know a picture and she said mom this is a wax figure of me so that is beautiful that she shared that moment she said they got the teeth everything everything took measurements now again like i said you know you got to be icon status all right that's her wax figure uh on the ship from london coming over to new york and she gave everyone in the audience her virtual audience tickets for a visit to the uh, museum, Madame Tussauds in New York. So I thought that that was nice. So again, you gotta be a big dog, big dog status in order to have a wax figure of yourself in this famous, famous wax museum in New York. Jocelyn Hernandez could never. Take notes, Jocelyn, take notes. All right, up next, this is according to the New York Post, okay? So this is for all the Marvel fans. So Marvel, they actually set dates for the next 10 movies, including the Black Panther sequel. Now, did they already start filming with Chadwick Boseman? There's not that much detail um, about the, uh, the sequel. We don't know who is going to be taking over as the Black Panther character. It would make a lot of sense if it was... Um, uh, T'Challa, is that his name? Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. It would make sense if it was his sister in the movie, but we don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen. A lot can happen between now and next year. So again, um, not only Black Panther 2, but that's, Black Panther, excuse me, Black Panther 2 is going to be released. It's scheduled to be released uh, in theaters July 8th, 2022, okay? So uh, Lupita, uh, said that um, she was an actress. She's in the movie as well. She is an actress. She said that they did a good job, in her opinion, of honoring Chadwick Boseman's memory. So that's a good sign, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. Other movies that are going to be coming out, you got Black Widow. Um, that's coming out this year, July 9th, 2021. Um, 
The Eternals, that's going to be in November of this year. Spider-Man, No Way Home, that's December 17th, 2021. What else did Thor? Okay, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, July 8th, 2022. The Marvels, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, that's coming out February 17th, 2023. Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, May 5th, 2023. So to all of my fellow nerds and Marvel lovers, there you have it. This is courtesy of the New York Post. So if you want to read the article in its entirety, feel free to do so. Okay, if you're just coming in, good morning, grand rising, greetings, all that good stuff. Make sure you are hitting the like button. That's for my YouTube family. Shout out to my Twitchers who are watching the replay. And if you're watching live, I cannot see the chat. I don't know where my chat is, so I'm not ignoring you. Uh, good morning and all that good stuff. All right, let's move this along. I'm, I'm not going to be here forever. Mike Tyson is coming out with a documentary. Now, I've seen so many. I feel like I've seen so many Mike Tyson movies in my entire existence. There was like a little movie on like Fox, I think, back in the day, like a little made-for-TV movie back in the day. Um, I think he had an HBO documentary, if I'm not mistaken, right? So either way, I mean, Mike Tyson is a definitely uh, a legend. So there is going to be a another docu-series or documentary coming up on um, ABC. It's like an ABC News series. So Yahoo article reads, a new documentary series from ABC News will explore what propelled boxer Mike Tyson to fame and everything that's happened since. So you guys remember the game Mike Tyson's Punch Out? That's one of my favorite games ever. That's for like Nintendo, the original Nintendo console. I know, I know, I'm an 80s baby. Anyway, Mike Tyson, who is now 54, he was the undisputed world heavyweight champion from 1987 to 1990. He, uh, his first win at the age of 20 made him the youngest player to hold the title. Um, Mike Tyson was called the baddest man on the planet because he was the baddest man on the planet. Actress Rosie Perez, who has often been dubbed the first lady of boxing, says in the trailer. Oh, is that because she was in the I'm going to knock you out video? Mama said knock you out or because she was dancing, fight the power in the beginning of um, what movie was that? A Spike Lee movie. I don't remember which one it was. It wasn't. Uh, I don't remember. Drop that in the comments to let me know. I'm having a brain fart right now. Now, this is going to be a four-hour series. It's um, going to take a look at Mike Tyson's personal life, which has been riddled with controversy, including accusations from his first right wife. Uh, you know who his first wife? I don't even want to utter her name. I can't stand her. Um, and she basically said that, you know, Mike Tyson put pause on her. I remember that dreadful Barbara Walters interview when I was a young princess. Uh, and it was just, it was a mess. Even back then I knew that like, this is weird. It's very, very awkward. So Tyson admitted to Oprah Winfrey on her show in 2009. I have socked her before and she socked me before as well. It was just that kind of relationship. Other points of legal trouble for Mike Tyson, including a 1992 conviction our word conviction for which he served three years behind bars, biting off a piece of Evander Holyfield's ear during a 1997 rematch, um, a prison stint in 99 for getting hands on with two motorists. And again, briefly in 2007 for possession of that Christina Aguilera, that white girl, that booger sugar and driving under the influence and more. So this four part series um, is going to be, when is this supposed to be coming out? It would be nice if you guys knew, right? Uh, check your local listings. I don't know. It's not showing here in the article when this is going to be released. Um, so this is the documentary, but to my, oh, okay. May 25th at 8 PM Eastern standard time with the second installment airing at the same time on June 1st on ABC. Uh, it can also be viewed the next day on demand and Hulu. So after it airs on, I guess, ABC, it's going to go straight to Hulu. But to my understanding, I thought there was going to be a movie where Jamie Foxx is supposed to be playing Mike Tyson. No, didn't, didn't you guys hear that? I guess I should have did my research, but there you have it. I'm going to be tuned in. I love documentaries, so I'll be watching it on ABC. Uh, for those of you who don't want to watch it on ABC, may not have ABC, you can catch it on Hulu right after 
it airs. All right, so who's up next? Everybody doing all right? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, get ready. Get, get your good wigs on. Put on your girdles because one of the wealthiest men in the world, financially wealthy, that is, has filed for divorce. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Gates. So Bill and Melinda Gates file for divorce. There is no prenup. Word on the street is there is no prenup. Now, you know, TMZ is nosy as heck and they got a hold of the divorce documents. So Melinda, she filed for divorce, citing that the marriage is irretrievably broken. The document asked the judge to rule the marriage ended as of the date in the separation contract. That contract is not included in the divorce filing, but they apparently separated at some point earlier and signed a document to that effect. Now, you know Bill Gates and Melinda probably got all their stuff in order, but ladies and gentlemen, Bill Gates is about to be a single man. Now, the divorce documents make it clear that there is no prenup. That's because according to the filing, the only written agreement that they say pertains to the divorce is the separation agreement. So not surprisingly, Melinda is not asking for any spousal support. They are asking for a trial date in April of 2022, but almost certainly this will be settled without a trial. Now, Bill Gates and his wife, Melinda, are moving on to what's next. They're getting divorced. In a joint statement Monday, the couple announced they've made the decision to end their marriage, saying, over the last 27 years, we have raised three incredible children and built a foundation that works all over the world excuse me, to enable all people to lead healthy, productive lives. Didn't, didn't Bill Gates have that patent on that 19 poke thing, Majig? Y'all know what I'm saying. You know, I got to watch my words. Anyway, they continue. We continue to share a belief in that mission and we'll continue our work together at the foundation. But we no longer believe that we can grow together as a couple in the next phase of our lives. Bill and Melinda began dating in 1987 after meeting at a New York trade show and she go on to work in making in marketing, excuse me, for Microsoft and be appointed as general manager of information products in the early 90s. The couple wed on January 1st, 1994 in Hawaii and Melinda left the company in 96 to focus on starting their family. Now I wonder if she still has a stake in the company. She's not asking for spousal support. So she probably owns 50% of his, if all of his creations or his intellectual property, no? Anyway, Bill and Melinda have three adult children, Jennifer, Rory, and Phoebe, and reside in their huge earth-sheltered family mansion dubbed Xanadu 2.0, overlooking Lake Washington in Medina. Really? They don't live in California? Hmm. Interesting. But then again, Bill Gates, probably not. Anyway, along with being uh, mega rich, the two are widely known for their philanthropic efforts ever since launching the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in 2000. It was estimated in 2014 that they had donated $28, bil donated $28 billion to the foundation, a number that's only skyrocketed in recent years. For instance, the Gates Foundation made a contribution of $250 million in late 2020 to fight the, the pandemic. Yeah, I bet. Uh, the Gates' net worth is estimated at more than $130 billion. Wow. So I wonder if she is, how the heck, TMC, they be on it, right? So I wonder, hmm, I wonder if she is going to have, I'm pretty sure she's going to have a huge stake in, um, in, the, uh, in the company. She's not asking for spousal support. Huh, that's interesting. So we'll see how this plays out. I don't think they want it to get nasty. There's no reason why it should. Look at um what's my man name? Who um and the Amazon dude. What is his name, y'all? Drop it in the comments if you're watching the replay. Um Bezos, Jeff Bezos, his wife, McKinsey, or his ex-wife, McKinsey, please, their divorce was one and done. You know, she gets a good, she left with a good amount of money, and I think she still owns a percentage of stock 
in Amazon. And please, uh, the, 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 the new girlfriend, Bezos, Jeff Bezos, new girlfriend, and McKinsey and her boyfriend, they took pictures. They were taking pictures together. Everybody gets along. Yeah. I guess when you don't have to worry about money or anything like that, it makes a difference. You know, some people are fortunate like that. All right, let's move this thing along. Versus, okay? Versus battle up next, uh, the day before Mother's Day on May 8th, Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And that's going to be 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. SWV versus Escape. Candy and them. Candy, Tiny and them, and Coco and them. Who you guys got? Who has the more extensive catalog? This is going to be interesting. I have a strong feeling that I'm going to be giggling and there's going to be a lot of memes that come from this. Um, just try to keep Candy, you know, away from the mic because, you know, she likes to, you know, drag things on. You know what I'm saying? Tiny is going through a lot with Shekana. Her and Shekana are no longer friends and they're going back and forth online. So this is going to be interesting. The comment section is going to be what I'm going to be paying attention to and the memes that will be produced after this versus. So this should be interesting. Again, Escape versus SWV. That is going to be on Saturday, May 8th, the day before Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day in advance to all of the moms and mom figures. <sighs> I don't know. My money's on SWV. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. Up next, Conan O'Brien. I know you're like, what? Who? Conan O'Brien. Some of you may have no idea who Conan O'Brien is. Conan O'Brien is one of my faves. Late night television show. You know, if it's between him and Jay Leno, I always rocked with Conan. You know, being that I'm a night owl, I always stayed up and watched Conan. Conan used to be on NBC late night with Conan O'Brien. Then he transitioned about 11 or 12 years ago to TBS, and he had his late night show on TBS, and he is now transitioning from TBS, and he's supposed to be going on HBO Max. So he made the announcement that basically he's wrapping up the last couple of episodes on TBS. I'm Team Coco. Put a thumbs up if you're Team Coco. I mean... Conan O'Brien is funny as heck, and I really love his late night show. Jimmy Fallon is great as well. You know, he's newer, newer school. But Conan O'Brien, to me, that's my that's my guy right there. Conan O'Brien is funny. So yes, he made the announcement that he is going to be basically wrapping up uh, over the next two months. He's going to be wrapping up his um, stint at TBS. One thing I like about Coco, Conan O'Brien, is that he continues to evolve. He doesn't stay stagnant. He keeps himself young. He's very funny. Um, he has a podcast, which is really entertaining. So he's always, like, evolving. He's, he's not staying stagnant. So he's been with TBS for about 11 years. And, again, he's going to be going over to HBO Max. So he just basically said, I just want to point that – I just want to point that for 11 years, the people at Turner have been absolutely lovely to me and everyone here at the staff. They gave me a home when I needed one most, and I am eternally grateful. I'm very proud of what we've accomplished here. Yeah, so he's leaving, you know, TBS on good terms. Um, I don't think I can play this video because TBS might ding me. But his last episode is going to um, air on June 24th, and then he's going to be transitioning over to HBO Max. I'm excited about that. Uh, I think HBO Max, he probably will have a little bit more freedom, not be so censored. But he's been doing good ever since he was, ever since I've been introduced to him many, many, many moons ago. So best wishes to Conan O'Brien. I'll continue to support because Conan O'Brien is funny as heck, in my opinion. All right, next up. Now, this is a doozy. This is a doozy. So apparently this producer claims that Misha Lay said that Dr. Dre was in bed with another man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Misha Lay claims that it's not true. Uh, but this producer is saying that that's what Misha Lay had told him. So the caption reads... <laughs> During an appearance on The Art of Dialogue, this producer, Curtis, recalled the conversation that he, quote, claimed 
he had um, that he was present for when Misha Lay allegedly stated that Dr. Dre was in bed with another man. He says that Suge Knight and Tupac were curious if Dre had ever, quote, done anything gay after rumors were going around about the producer, about Dr. Dre. So this guy that you see here in the middle, Curtis, can you see him? I'm going to play this in a minute. Curtis said that Misha Lay has said that she called Dr. Dre's hotel room looking for him and a man answered, or I, child, you just got to listen. This is courtesy of the Neighborhood Talk on their Instagram page. Like to hear it? Here you go. She calls Michelle up to the front and was like, Michelle, have you ever seen Dre do anything gay? She comes up with this story about, oh man, this is going to be some shit to get me in trouble with Dre. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> it shouldn't get me in trouble with Dre. Um, she comes up with this story about Bruce and Dre being in bed together and how she knew they was in bed together because she said she called her bedroom and Bruce answered the phone. Bruce. And she's like, uh, can I speak to my husband or boyfriend, whatever the hell? And he was like, here. And Dre answered the phone. She's like, how the fuck these motherfuckers? That's my bedroom. Ain't shit in there. Pac said some off the wall stuff to him. About Dre, is Dre gay? Have you ever seen Dre do anything gay? And he's like, no. Boom, 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 boom. Pac takes off on. Then Michelle, she calls Michelle up to the front and was like, Michelle, have you ever seen Dre do anything gay? She comes up with this story. Of I put a bed. What the fuck is you doing giving the phone to a motherfucker and he's like right there? So. You know, she tells this story. She, she, she said something and she was like, that's why that motherfucker ain't on death row. He's a fucking... F uh uh watch your mouth. What the fuck is you... So apparently, Suge Knight wanted to know if Dre was gay. Misha Lay tells the story that he was in her hot their hotel room with another man. Ah, uh, this is weird. But Misha Lay is allegedly denying this and says she ain't say nothing of the sort. Honey, let me tell you something right now. It's rumors like these that get people in serious trouble. Now, I am curious to see if Dr. Dre is going to respond. And when I saw this, I said to myself, you know what popped into my head automatically? Ice Cube's song, No Vaseline. I don't know. You guys go Google the lyrics and you'll understand what I'm saying. Moving along. <laughs> Woo wee, moving along. All right, I wanted to get to this. This is, again, courtesy of the Neighborhood Talk. Shout out to the Neighborhood Talk on Instagram. They always got the tea. Okay, so Quando Rondo allegedly was, you know, some things was let off in Georgia, and one of his mans and them from his entourage was wounded. Okay, now if y'all know... Oh, Lord. Everyone is saying that there's a bag on Quando's head. You know, he recently did a show uh, and a, no one barely was in attendance because they're afraid because, you know, it, people are after him. You know what I'm saying? Back in November of last year, King Von, you know, got into an altercation with Quando Rondo and it ended up in a tragedy, okay? King Von is no longer here with us. And Quando Rondo was accused of, you know, trying to take King Von's chain. Lil Tim was the one that, you know, let off. He got locked up, you know, he got out of jail. It's just a whole lot, a whole lot. Of, and you know what's crazy? I dived into this whole King Von, Old Block, OTF, Little Dirk and all of them, Quando, all of them, FBG Duck. I dove, I went down that rabbit hole a couple of months ago. Because when King Von was alive and making music, I I think I heard of him and I didn't know who he was, didn't know his music. So um, I got a chance to dive into his music, you know, all about Old Block, how Old Block got its name. We know, we know uh, Von is not from 63rd, you know, smoking on this pack. I went down that rabbit hole. And when I told you, I felt like I went to like Old Block University. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like for like a month or two, I dove into all of this. So 
to see this happening is very, very interesting. Um, am I surprised? No. Um, it's only going to get worse. It really only is going to get worse. So the, even TMZ was reporting this. I saw it on page six, you know, and it's just it's just crazy. So everybody is a lot of people are after him because of, you know, what happened to King Vaughn. So the neighborhood talk, their caption reads, according to TMZ, rapper Quando Rondo was reportedly popped at in Atlanta. Per the outlet, TMZ, that is, the shots rang out around 3.20 a.m. Sunday in Blackshear while Quando and his crew were in a parking lot of a off the highway. Uh, cops believe that the person who let off, you know, them things, they did so from across the road or from the highway. Sources say that police aren't aware of any, you know, bullets striking Quando because he was not at the scene when the cops responded. However, he was in the parking lot at the time of, you know, the situation. And one man in his crew was wounded. A motive for the popping hasn't been confirmed, but it's important to note that Quando Rondo's crew was involved in a November situation with King Von's entourage outside an Atlanta nightclub, which left Von going home to glory. Now, King Von was leaving his album release party and then decided to go to uh, another lounge. And that's where he, you know, ran into Quando Rondo. And then they started, you know, engaging in a fist fight. And King Von was popped a few times. It just got really ugly. It got very ugly after that. And I'll leave it at that. Some of you probably are already privy to all of what's going on. There's a lot of conspiracy theories going on about a setup and so on and so forth. But there has been a bag uh, placed on Rondo's head. And because, you know, Quando Rondo made a song, Pick Your Mans Up, he went on, you know, uh, social media and making fun of the fact that, you know, Vaughn is no longer here. It got crazy. And I think it's only going to get crazier. And this kid is young. You know, these kids are, are young. I think Vaughn was, what, 25 when he, um, when he left us. So it's just, it's just going to get ugly. I am not surprised. Uh, a lot of people thought that this would come sooner. Uh, it's just, it's just, it's just a mess. Now, Quando Rondo was actually at a gas station and a fan ran into Quando Rondo at a gas station and, you know, wanted to take a picture with him. So this was moments, apparently this was moments before the situation happened with his, uh, where somebody from his um, crew was injured. Are you serious? Yes. You liar. Bro, are you serious? Yes. Can I give you a hug? Come on. Oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> You're lying. Uh, are you serious? No, she didn't say you're alive. I can't. First of all, if I ran up on him in public, I would just keep it moving because, again, that's why a lot of people weren't at his show. His show was basically scarce. He was performing on stage with his crew. I'm pretty sure majority of them were strapped, and this was in Atlanta, and it was like, I think they counted like 11 people. Yeah, nobody wants to go into a club and possibly not come out because they know he's got he's got people looking for him. So it's, it's sad. It's a shame. You know, people want to get revenge. I don't know. It's just, it's just ugly. It's just ugly. All right. Moving along. Sean Combs. Okay. <laughs> you know, this guy, this guy's really something, really something else. So Sean P Diddy, Puff Daddy, Diddy, He's now going by love. If you follow him on Instagram, then you know he calls himself love. So this is his driver's license. He actually posted the driver's license with all of his information. I think he just blocked out the uh, the the address, like the his house number. But the shade room actually whited out his address. But he had everything up there. His driver's license number, everything. Anyway, shout out to the shade room. So his name now is Sean Love Combs. Does he love brushes too? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> a little funny there. I mean, this is so gimmicky, but I guess whatever. I, you, nobody's going to call you love. People, are, I'm still calling you Diddy. It is what it is, you know? So his caption reads, look what I just got in the mail today. It's official. Welcome to the love era. 
Diddy, nobody is calling you. Nobody is calling you love. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm not calling you love. I'm ca I'm calling you Diddy. You know, we we know you as Puff Daddy. We know you as P Diddy. Diddy. That's what we're calling you. So, it is what it is. He also posted this. This is from his Instagram page. This looks like the state of California, the courts in California, where he's actually getting a name change. Before it was Sean John Combs, and now it's Sean Love Combs. You know what this smells like to me? You're trying to avoid some sort of legal something, that whether it's tax, I don't know, because your name is changed now. So let's say that he's in debt. Sean John Combs is indebted to whosoever and has this huge bill to pay. Sean Love Combs has nothing to do with Sean John Combs' debt. I don't know. I just feel like I've seen this before. How these, you know, businessmen be hustling and doing these things and getting out of, you know, paying these debts. I could be totally wrong, but your first name is not love. Your middle name is. So I, I thought that's interesting. Uh, Diddy, ain't nobody calling you love. Are you going to be calling him love? No, we're calling you Diddy. But, you know, respectfully. All right, let's wrap this on up. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited that Legendary, the show on HBO Max, is going to be returning. I'm super, super excited. So this is going to be returning, I think it is May 6th, either the 6th or the 7th. So this is going to be season two. So they were renewed for a season two what the heck is legendary legendary is a competition show and it is basically bringing the ballroom to mainstream fun fact about me i have always 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 been a fan of the ballroom scene the underground the key key scene i've always been a fan of the ballroom maybe that's like the new yorker-esque in me but leomi malzanato who is if you know ballroom, then you know who Laomi is. So she's crossed over into mainstream. She is one of the judges on the show. Megan Thee Stallion was a, a guest judge in season one. It seems like she's going to be making more appearances in season two. And they alternate with, um, you know, with celebrities. So it seems like there's going to be more celebrities. The season one is on HBO Max uh, still. And I can't get enough. I love, 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 love this show. I love the drama. I love the cost. Everything about Ballroom times 20 on a major platform now. I'm here for it. So I love this show. If you are interested, check it out. Again, the, the Ballroom scene now has become very mainstream. And it's putting a lot of the... Um, the houses, that's what they call themselves, like the groups. They're like families. And they're, you know, you have house of such and such, such and such house. You know, they all come together and they compete for a grand prize. But this show is top notch. I'm here for it. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited that it's going to be coming back. You know, I can't, you know, play the whole thing because we don't want to get dinged. So May 6th. And the new season... Um, starts on may 6th season two it seems like there's going to be three episodes for the season premiere so i'm here for it i think total of 10 episodes for the season but check it out i love 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 legendary again everything about the ballroom scene i've always been a fan okay all right bringing it on home ladies and gentlemen lord have mercy so Safari and Erica Mena are expecting baby number two, right? So Safari posted this beautiful picture of him and his wife. Uh, is it me or Erica got darker? What's, what's up with this tan, sis? Hmm. So she has a belly there. Um, Safari looks great. Um, this is an interesting maternity shoot because he's like a bank robber. You know, he looks absolutely amazing. He's been working on his body. He always works on his body if you follow him on Instagram. Beautiful, beautiful um, picture. Uh, do I believe that she's pregnant? No. I'm going to tell you why. Because Erica and Safari play too much on this social media, okay, on this internet. They play entirely too much. One minute they're getting a divorce. One minute this one is cussing this one out. One minute this one is cheating. What's tea? Okay, so we never know. But this is a beautiful photo of the two. Um, I will believe it when Erica gives birth. I'm going to be straight up honest. I know who would lie about something like that, right? Same person who would lie about 
Safari cheating on her and them getting a divorce. But maybe then again, he did. I don't know. Who knows? But if you are pregnant, congratulations, girl. If you're not, you a mess. Um, I'm just keeping it real. I don't believe it. So when she has her baby or when she has a baby shower and actually, you know, gives birth, then I'll believe it. So Safari is hoping for a boy. Hopefully they have a healthy baby and um, Erica has a healthy pregnancy again, if she indeed is pregnant. But this photo looks absolutely amazing. Beautiful photo shoot. So congratulations, uh, I guess, tentatively <laughs> for them. All right, Royal Family. Ooh, record timing. See, I told you I wasn't going to be before you long. I'm going to try to keep the morning shows a little bit shorter um, because an hour is a long time. So if you're watching the replay on YouTube, thank you for joining. Shout out to everyone who tipped in and out on Twitch. Royal Family YouTube, attention, attention. I have an announcement. If you are not following me on Twitch, Twitch is a app, a streaming app. It is free to download. I'm definitely trying to build up a following over here in the Twitch community. Okay, uh, be sure to follow me on Twitch. You know, it's good to have more than one platform to stream and upload on, okay? But Royal Family, I just wanna say thank you for joining me today. I hope you guys have a splendid, fantastic, positive, productive Tuesday. May the 4th be with you, all right? I will be back for something else soon, so make sure that you have your notifications on if you are subscribed. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. This way, you know, join the royal family. You'll be notified, hopefully, every time I upload a new video. So that's all I got for today's Hot Topics. Um, hopefully, I'll be back uh, tomorrow, if not later on, with something else. It, looked like, it looks like it's about to rain where I am, and I'm a little pissed because I just got my car washed early, early, early this morning before I jumped on here for the morning show. All right, I'm wrapping it up. Signing off for now, royal family. And as always, until next time, folks. Peace.